So as I mentioned earlier, I'm Stephanie, and um, and I've been with Fist since the very beginning. When Lauren first approached me with this idea back in the summer of 2012, um, I was delighted, I was intrigued, and I was terrified, both at the prospect of participating and at the thought of not being involved. FOMO, bitch. <laughs> um, I told myself that I had to be in that first show that I was afraid that if I didn't, I would lose my nerve. And I also thought that after that first go, word would get out and the competition might be too steep. <laughs> A hundred storytellers later, I think I was right. <laughs> so I did, and it changed my life. Um, Fist has given me the most amazing network of badass women. It has given me a sense of community. Yeah, and I swim. Um, it's given me a sense of community. It's given me a creative outlet. But first, it gave me bravery. And our next storyteller, Erin Wittig, um, I've always been impressed with her bravery, her adventurousness, her candor, and her wit. Um, one of the best things about Fist is that we often talk about and hear about the things that we're sometimes told that you're not supposed to talk about. Girl. She is, to me, the poster child for that. Um, her stories, to me, highlight the things that we should talk about, that we need to talk about. And it's not about being edgy, it's about being honest. And uh, I just love that. I also have to note that some of my favorite rehearsals have been at her house. Um, accompanied with a mean sangria and guacamole. <laughs> if you can get invited to one, you should. Um, so please welcome to the stage with her show, her, sorry, her story from our Left Be a Lady show in March 2016, Erin Wittig. Truth. 
For most of my 20s, I got my pills from Planned Parenthood. It, yeah, yeah. it was affordable and discreet. In other words, I wouldn't be running into my mom there. <laughs> my first visit, I sat in the waiting room, and I tried not to look at the girls and women around me and wonder who might be getting an abortion that day. After I had endured the exam and the questions and was finally able to walk out of there with that cool plastic clamshell case <laughs> and three months' worth of freedom from fear, I stopped thinking about those girls and women. They had been unlucky. That wasn't going to be me. I was a terrible pill taker. <laughs> I was really good at first. Never missing one, always taking them at the same time of day, and making sure I knew when I was on the third pack so I could refill before running out. That maybe lasted a year. The pill is really good at lulling you into complacency and convincing you that you're not getting pregnant because you're just awesomely infertile because <laughs> your boyfriend smokes so much pot. <laughs> Maybe it seems improbable because the pill is so small. How could something that tiny stop the unstoppable force of life? <laughs> that my boyfriend's sperm were half-lidded stoners who fell asleep before they could get to my egg was far more plausible. <laughs> no pregnancy scares and his broody eyes and droll wit made him husband material. <laughs> Five weeks after we got married, we moved to Tokyo so I could pursue my dream of teaching English in windowless cubicles to housewives and bored teenagers. <laughs> Planned Parenthood let me buy a year's worth of pills because I had no idea how Japanese people did these things. <laughs> The pill turned out to be just as much of a pain to get in, in Japan, probably more so because I didn't speak Japanese. The one time I did... Oh, I need my hands for this one. <laughs> the one time I did go to a hospital there, nobody spoke English, and there's only so far you can get with gestures. My amateur sign language for birth control would have looked a lot like I was trying to get a prescription for cyanide. <laughs> for Tokyo ran out, we moved back to the U.S. so I could go to grad school. That's when we stopped having sex. <laughs> Not like cold turkey, but for... <laughs> I'm so glad somebody finds that. <laughs> Not like cold turkey, but for folks who had only been married a little over a year, it was at least lukewarm turkey. <laughs> I kept taking the pill for a while, and then I let the last pack run out. I told myself and him it was because I was in school and I didn't make enough money to justify it, and we could just use condoms, but neither of us liked them. So the times that we did do it, we relied on his impeccable sense of timing. <laughs> But I was scared every time, and every month I waited for my period like a tax return. <laughs> my fear followed us to Bosnia, where I got my first real job teaching English at a university. One month, I was so terrified I was pregnant that I sat on our toilet crying for 15 minutes until Gabe went out and bought a pregnancy test. When he came back, he told me that they sold oral contraceptives over the counter. <laughs> the test was negative, and the world went back to color. I didn't buy the pills, though. Partly, I was convinced that they had a bad effect on me. I felt irritated, prone to outbursts, mostly directed at Gabe, and fatter. I didn't like that the onus was on me to make sure that we didn't have a kid. I kind of felt like I was doing the lion's share of everything else adult-related in our life, and I was pissed that this, too, was my responsibility and my burden. <laughs> Some parts of this shit, you gotta... <laughs> I hear how this sounds, and I know that some guys might say that condoms are a concession that the guy makes. 
right? I can't feel anything. <laughs> I'm gonna abandon all the diplomacy here because of this. <laughs> and say, no, they fucking aren't. <laughs> Condoms are not something you have to remember to take every goddamn morning or evening or shit, I gotta take two this morning, <laughs> or endure scrutiny of your nethers and your intentions and your purity for. They are not something you have to remember to get a prescription for. And if you forget that prescription because you are human and therefore flawed, you do not have to wait for your doctor to call it in to the pharmacy for you, maybe in the next couple of weeks, if you're lucky. Condoms are not a concession. They are a byproduct of the luck of being born male-bodied and therefore free to decide when and whether you are going to make life. Bosnia and Southeast Asia, oral contraceptives were sold like candy or soda, over the counter and without a prescription. In these places, my parents were reluctant to visit, where clean water was hard to come by, and I feared food poisoning and malaria. I could freely buy a pill that would alleviate my fear of pregnancy. I could and did walk into a pharmacy in Bangkok and walk out with an armload of little pink boxes. Yeah, an armload. And <laughs> judge me. <laughs> no, nobody was. Nobody. As luck would have it, I have somehow managed to evade the miracle of life. <laughs> I guess applause. I, I must look like the shittiest mother on the planet. Like, oh my God, this woman has not made life. <laughs> Even with my shoddy track record and questionably principled stance, there have been close calls. The closest of which <clears throat> was when I started an affair with a man in Burma while Gabe was still in the United States and, <clears throat> and still married to me. <laughs> if there's a god up there who smites women the way that some folks think he does, Mike Pence, <laughs> he must have fallen asleep at the switch with my name on it. The last time I stopped taking the pill was last October. It was the evening before I was to leave on a long weekend trip with Steve, a.k.a. Man in Burma, now my husband, <laughs> and I had been writing BC on my hand all week for birth control. <laughs> to remember to refill my prescription. And I noticed tonight I have a note written on my hand. So I, I haven't grown up in years. At the Safeway Pharmacy, they told me my prescription had expired and my doctor had to call in a new one. No checkup required, just a call from a doctor whose approval I had already received and apparently needed to receive again one arbitrary year later. The pointlessness of this overwhelmed me, and I raged through the Safeway, shouting to <laughs> no one in particular, I can get a gun that would kill a kid easier than I can get a pill that will prevent one from being born. <laughs> Steve says that he will get a vasectomy. I am grateful. I am grateful, but it's a messy gratitude. I feel a principled stand creeping in. His choices come so easily, uh -huh. and even surgery is no big deal. It's done in the doctor's office in a couple of minutes. We could go out to dinner after. P.S. We just did this in May. And just a side note to, to tell you how totally casual this is. The doctor was playing his Pandora station while my husband was getting the vasectomy. 
fucking... <laughs> Let's get it on. <laughs> while they were giving him the vasectomy. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I recently read that they're developing a sperm switch. No kidding. The headline read, men can turn fertility on and off with new invention. Ladies, we have our luck and we have our choices that we fight tooth and nail for, that we are judged for, that we jump through hoops for, and meanwhile, Science devotes itself to making the male contraceptive version of the clapper. <laughs> My heretofore unfertilized egg may indeed be the result of more than a little luck. But the most miraculous thing, I think, the luckiest thing, is that women's rage has not spilled over. That we don't weep every day. <laughs> <laughs> at this blatant imbalance and injustice, and as Joan Holloway would say, that we don't burn this place to the ground. <laughs>